What's going on? Welcome back to Kicking It With. My name is Zach Holcomb. Today we've got Joe, Joe Hargit. Hargit on. This is episode 16? 16. 16. I never... Well, it says 15 up there. Oh, sweet. Yeah, Tommy's dropping right now Monday. <laughs> if you missed uh, episode 15 with Tommy Maddox, don't forget, you can always run back up and check that one out after you watch this episode. But this is episode 16. Welcome back. Good call, yeah. You know. I've been kind of paying attention to what's going on today. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. You're tuned in on a Monday. I like just, it a just watching, just watching. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, what's going on, man? Welcome to the show. I know you're like, uh, you're pretty, uh, I would say you're Kinston famous for sure. You like to travel to Key West. I'm just throwing out yeah, things I that I've Key picked West. up. Key West is a big one. <laughs> As the kids got older, we went further. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> Started off at like Why stop in Orlando? Uh, Island Rod and Marathon, and then the kids left the house, and then we made it all the way down to um, actual the Key West. Yeah. And, We've been there, I think, three years in a row now. We're running okay. it again for this summer. Awesome. That's how, see, look at me. I'm paying attention here on the Facebooks, man. That's how, <laughs> that's how I, I, I know I said that on purpose. Yeah, paying attention to the Facebooks, and that's how I learn, trying to learn the folks of the town, man. But, yeah, those are the things I've picked up. Kings, vacations in Key West, always having a good time. Seven Saturdays is the way I like to describe it. Seven Saturdays. Seven Saturdays. I try to have a good time. I got to yeah. keep my wife, you know, 10 years younger than I am, so I got to keep her happy. Yeah. She's and active. Running for them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you got to stay in that sub 10 years That's right. phase there. I like that. That's cool. That's a way to push yourself, though. You know what I mean? You tie down like the younger lady like that. That's a, that's yep. a good move. That's a good move. And then, yeah, you're a Phillies fan, I believe. I'm a big time Phillies fan. Big. Like, you're one of the only folks, not only, but you're one of the few folks I see in town that, like, is hip to the MLB game. And it's always easy to be hip to the game when your team is good. No, baseball like is my favorite sport. You watch it whether your team is good or not. That's right. Yes. I, well, you ask my wife. I mean, it, I sit there and we got Major League Pass. I watch every Phillies game that comes on TV every night. I mean, they played earlier in the year. They lost to the Mets in the bottom of the ninth inning. They let the Mets score five runs on them and they lost the game. And I was like, I'm done. I'm, not, I'm done. I'm not <laughs> a Phillies fan anymore, and yes. I was watching them the next night. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The MLB pass is amazing. I have it for the Cubs games. It's been really shitty the last few years. <laughs> yeah, well, you won your World Series a couple years ago. We did, and we I beat mean, the know, Indians to yeah. do it. So, like, really cool time to be alive and be a Cubs fan in the That's state right. of Ohio at that we point. We ain't got to beat the Indians no more. Yeah, exactly. They're they don't guardians. even exist. Yeah, they're gone. <laughs> Poof. Ha ha, Nick. My stepbrother's a huge uh, Cleveland fan, so we get along for the Browns stuff. But, right, um, Cleveland Browns. Yeah, but – You're I'm, not a Bears fan? No, I'm, I think – so my reasoning behind that is growing up, we had no cable TV, and then we – like, we got it. And right. And WGN had the Cubs games on during the day because they played day uh, games. That's how I, I, I would love to get home after, the, after in high school. Yeah. I'd have it marked on the calendar when the Phillies played the Cubs – because it's yeah, always you on know TV. they're on. Yes, yeah. exactly. So it was kind of one of those things. And I think that's why there's probably a lot of Braves fans in this area is because it's on. That's what it always was. It's on TBS. It's on Turner Sports. So it makes sense. But back in that time, there really wasn't a big, huge push for, like, the uh, regional sports cable networks. They weren't really popping yet. So and Wrigley was always – didn't yeah. have lights in it. So when we get home from school at 3 o'clock, the game has been on for an hour, and you pick it up in the third or fourth inning, and you're good to go. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, we had that, and then, like, all summer long, man, you're just sitting there with nothing to do, and boom, there's baseball games on. And we so used to have loved it. the wild world of sports. Yes, that is true. They don't do that anymore. No. We just get ESPN constantly. See, I'm not, a, I'm not an Eagles fan either. I'm a Redskins fan, a com Commanders fan. A Commanders fan, the Redskins. <laughs> no. I'm still a Redskins fan. <laughs> did you see the uh, tribute they did to Sean Taylor yes, last I week? Yes, I did. That was ridiculous. <laughs> Snyder's got to go. He's an idiot. He's got to go. He is a freaking idiot. He's the, the richest idiot in the world. <laughs> he has more dollars than cents. Is the way, way more like dollars than cents. Describe it. But it's like, how are you going to put up like a little stencil mannequin man of a guy I know, like that? That's crazy. Yeah. Crazy. That crazy. was bad. Yeah. Uh. So yeah. So let's see. So yeah, you're a Washington guy. Do you have? Do you care any about any other uh, like professional sports? Any hockey? I mean, or I, basketball I, 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 or I'm, I'm, I'm a Flyers fan. Okay. And I'm a Sixers fan, but I really, the Sixers fan kind of died out in the mid 80s yeah. when Jordan got drafted by the Bulls. Yeah. Because you know, yeah. I'm a Carolina fan. So you went. So I kind of started, I mean, I really don't have a favorite NBA team. I mean, if I had to pick one you right just now. Like if, good ones, right? Yeah, I'd like, yeah, I'd like, I'd probably go um, the Golden State Warriors. Yeah. I like Curry. Yeah, I like that too. That's kind of how I am with the with the NBA. Like, I like specific teams ba at at specific times based on who's there and yeah. the style of ball that they play because it may be entertaining to me and stuff like that. Like, I really liked the uh, like the mid two thousands Orlando Magic with like Jameer Nelson and uh, Dwight Howard were pretty cool teams. Mm -hmm. You know, we had the Cavs and we had LeBron at that time, so we were living high on the hog, baby. I mean, 
Cleveland Cavaliers. Well, you were before your time for the Detroit Bad Boys, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, a little bit. So I don't really remember watching the Bad Boys um, stuff, but my parents had it on when I was like a toddler. Right. So I was absorbing it. Getting in the microwave Johnson. Yes. And, <laughs> yes. Um, and Daly, right? And then um, Isaiah. Rodman. Lambert. Yeah, Lambert. Rodman. Rodman. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. I remember Rodman there, like, briefly. My mom was a big Bad Boys fan. She loved them. But they used to, like, they really got down. Oh, they, I mean, they, if they, they would annihilate any team in the NBA today. Oh, my God. They would have, like, 14 flagrants in the first quarter with these <laughs> pussified rules that they play yeah, no, with now. It's terrible. You can't even look at the guy with the ball. No. I like that they've been cracking down on the travel slightly, which I haven't watched a whole lot of games. But I haven't been watching it. I haven't actually sat down and watched a whole game yet this year. Yeah. I got the NBA pass, but I keep forgetting. The, I keep getting the notification. I, I was watching the last. I got Philly. I got the Phillies. I got the Major League and NFL. Yeah, the NFL. You like that one? I think yeah. I'm a big pusher for. Do you guys have the ticket down there at Kings? Do what now? Do you have the NFL ticket at Kings? I, I need curious. it. I was just saying because yesterday, I can't watch. I mean, I'm always working on Sunday. You may as well. It's a and I can't experience. watch the day because I mean, it's, it, I don't understand. When I was growing up, Redskins were on every weekend, and then Carolina came along. And they put, and I understand that, okay? But then when Carolina sucks and they go to another team to watch, it's not the Redskins or the Commanders or whoever the hell they are. Yeah, whatever. I mean, like, look, I mean, they've got a winning record. They're going to the playoffs. Can we maybe show them? Yeah, it's regional, too. Yeah, and it's regional. I don't understand the skipping of the regional stuff, too. It drives me freaking crazy. So this shit used to piss me off in Ohio. You're living in Columbus. You got the Bengals and the Browns are playing. And what are they showing? The flipping Ravens game. I hate the Ravens. I don't want to watch. Why would the Ravens ever be on in Ohio? That's Baltimore, right? Yeah, they yeah. should never. That's the old Browns, the original Browns. That 2000 yeah, championship yeah. was the Browns title, yeah. but Art stole it from us. And if you're Scott Whittington, you know what I'm talking about. That was thievery. That was terrible. And I hate well, see, the Ravens. It always should be the Baltimore Colts. Yes, they should have went as the Colts. They I should mean, have petitioned the NFL to give them the name They should have been the Colts. I know. Yeah. They also the Indianapolis Colts. That don't even make sense. Yeah. What, should, what would they be? The St. Louis Rams. What's up yeah. with that? I don't understand that Did it that be either. the Cardinals, and then they moved to Arizona? Now it's the Phoenix Cardinals. Do they even have Cardinals Arizona. in Arizona? It's kind of hot down there. It should just be the Phoenix, the Arizona Phoenix. <laughs> That's what it should That's be. That's what it should be. <laughs> if they want to name it after a bird. Yeah, exactly. The flaming bird. That's where, where they're at. That does make a lot of sense. They should rebrand it. Yeah. Maybe if we could figure out a way to make the Cardinal be something that's well, the, like I can guarantee offensive. you the Cardinal's not even a bird in Arizona. Right. It's, it's a too bird. hot down it's there. The it's a wintertime bird. It's the state bird of Ohio. Did you, Do you know? ever see the cardinal around here in the, in the summertime? No. Not but you see them in the wintertime because yeah. it gets cool enough down here and they'll come. They'll come but down. when it gets hot, they're gone. Yeah. Yeah, the cardinal state bird of Ohio. Did you know? A little they bit are. Of, I think they're state bird of Virginia, D-Y-K. too. Are they? Yeah. We'll have to ask uh, Brian Hanks. He might know. Big Virginia guy. I was born in Virginia. Virginia. Really? Mm-hmm. Nice. Where at? Waynesboro. Waynesboro. DuPont. That's how I'm here. My dad. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So that's the path to uh, Kinston, huh? Yeah. Via it, was, it was Waynesboro, Virginia, Wilmington, Delaware, where I became a Phillies fan. Mm-hmm. My dad's side of the family is from Wilmington, Delaware, and they all live up there. And I, took, we, I, went to the, I went to the World Series games with them this year. Nice. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah uh, I did see up there. Yep. And then we, I moved down here. My dad got transferred down here in 77. Gotcha. Cool. I've been living here ever since. That's sweet. Have you seen the pictures of, like, that long hallway that they've got there at the DuPont plant? I've been on it, yes. Is it pretty, it's that long. Is it pretty cool, though, like, as an experience? Like, probably not if you're just clocking in. It's probably not the experience I'm looking for. But like, It's a long haul. In the terms of, like, wow, this is pretty remarkable. Yeah. Long. Well, they got two seats. They got one side of the plant, as they call yarn, Y1, Y2, Y3, all the way up to 7, and the other side, staple side. And they got the industrial side above that. So that whole side of the plant. Is on one side of the hallway, and the yarn side is on the other side. Okay. I got you. I got you. It's like divided up by that hallway. And the hallway, when you're standing, when you first walk in and you look down the hallway, you cannot see the end of it. That hallway reminds me of the movie The Green Mile Mm -hmm. for some reason. But the pictures I've seen, like, looking down it that go viral on, like, the Facebooks, very freaking cool. Very cool. I just want to go, like, walk that hallway just to take pictures in it because I think it looks like it's super If you ask nicely, they might listen in. Yeah. You need to go talk to Bill Howard. Bill Howard. Cool. I'll have to you do know, that Jonathan, take the super camera. Taylor Howard owned the, auto, the automobile store on Highway 11, right mm-hmm. outside of town. I don't. They're from Hugo. Okay. His daddy's been working. His daddy worked. His daddy, their daddy worked with my daddy at DuPont, and he okay. still works out there. Nice, nice, nice. So they just got a, had a little purchase, or they sold it off to that other K 
can't remember the name of the company that just picked it up. Yeah, there's not they're not DuPont anymore. No, they sold like just that division or plant or something to. I, I can't don't remember think the they sold the whole plant. They sold just a part of it, didn't they? I don't know. They see they have a research and development plant there DuPont too. Man. Oh no, I don't doubt. doubt they. I doubt they sold that. Anyone that's do you know anyone that works in the R and D plant there? Uh, Bill Rowland did. Bill Rowland. We got to hit up that up because that's we got stuff for the R&D. He's big. Folks. He's big Civil War. Okay, very cool. Very cool. Yeah, you're kind of hip to all that stuff too, as well. A little bit. Yeah, a little. I'm more World War II, but I've got, I've become more. I mean, I'm on the CSS news board. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're trying to get involved. Yeah. And it's it is heritage for a lot of people around here, so I try to I try to learn as much as I can. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I we love have people come stuff. in and they want to ask you questions. You don't want to look at them like you don't know what the hell they're talking about. Yeah, exactly. Especially when you're like running a staple business from the area. Yeah, it helps to know a little bit yes. about it. <laughs> yeah. Especially on 70, you probably pick up a lot of transient traffic just buzzing through town, right? Oh, yeah. we get, I mean, that's our, yeah, our business in the summertime is all. All transient. Oh. Yeah. yeah it's it's crazy sense. right now. Really? I got really? people calling up wanting to do catering jobs next week and I'm full. I ain't got no room in the inn. That's awesome. I mean, it's just don't, don't nothing left. That is freaking awesome, man. Congrats on that. And they're friends time. of mine, people that have booked every year. Yeah, and you're like, I'm sorry. And they're just used to being calling up and saying, hey, yeah, last I week. need a catering Wednesday. I'm like, we can't do that. <laughs> yeah, the times have changed. We, booked up a, we have picked up a lot of new business out of town mm-hmm. since the lockdown. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. How was the uh, the Oink Express, man? I'm into that. Is that I mean, it so is. that's I the mean, e-commerce and the shipping it, out? It is way, way, way up from what it was pre-COVID. Yep. Like 2019, uh-huh. I mean, we did 35% more in a month of November this year than we did the whole month of December in 2019. Wow. And that's wow. without a lockdown. So we retained, right. we've retained 80% of the business. That's new business. Awesome. That is freaking amazing. So it's, still, it's still, I mean, it's not like, and we sent out 4,000 orders in the month of December in 2020. <laughs> this year, we'll probably do 2,500. Okay. Last year we did, we did four thousand. Last year we did like thirty two hundred, and so I'm figuring we're going to be somewhere around two, mm-hmm. which is in the in in pre COVID we did five hundred the whole month. That's <laughs> crazy. Yeah. It's like a hundred hours a pop too. Each one yeah. of them. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. it's a good. Yeah, I mean the uh, it's easy to set aside the marketing budget for that campaign because yeah. it is definitely <laughs> ROI positive yeah. for sure. That is sweet. No, it's so easy to advertise for it too, because it's all e-commerce. You, know, you got everybody's ever email ordered. That's, that's ever ordered from me yeah. forever. Yeah, what's and up? Just, let's, let's send a mass email out, yeah. and it's like, boom, come to work the next week. There's 200 orders on the computer. Yep, it's amazing. Hey, everyone else in town, if you're not using e-commerce, wake up, because <laughs> you can have a good old time town business, and then all of a sudden start applying the you internet send to it. it to and all your chow. relatives that are out of state or out of town that that need good Kinston food. They don't live here no more. It ain't nothing but, it ain't but a click away. And then they have it, and then they go to, like, a football game party in the neighborhood, and then they take a dish, and then someone's like, this is really good. Where would you get this from? And they're like, let me tell you about this place on the, on the website right here. Here's the link. Here's the yada yada. And yep. now you're getting orders from random people in California because yep. one time that person from Kinston showed them what King's Barbecue was all about. That's right. It's crazy. Shocking, the internet. You never know. You never <laughs> and know. And it's done a lot for us. Yeah, for sure. It took a little while to get, I mean, we, I mean really sorry it had to be because of COVID, but I mean, some, some, some of the few positive things that have happened because of that, that was one of them. Yeah, well, you us. know, where they take it the way, there's a give somewhere. You just got to find it, you know what I mean? Yeah. I like, like, I think like some people traditionally, and I think you do a good job of pivoting to what is hot. Like, oh, this night's not so hot. Let's pivot away from it. We need some stuff for staffing. That's fine. We've got this e-commerce stuff. It's going well. So you, I feel like from the outside, I don't really know you that well. I mean, we've had a couple of conversations, but like watching the business and the way that you operate things from afar is very indicative of a person that is following the trends and knows his numbers and is paying attention to, and whether it's you or whether it's the team of people you surround yourself with, which is still you. Well, they make me, I make them give me the numbers. Yeah. When, <laughs> they don't, yeah. They, they, they don't really have an out. idea of what they all are. I yeah. have to take a look at it and figure yeah. it out. Yep, yeah, exactly. But, yeah, having, the, having that all vibing and jiving is pretty sweet. Yeah. What, what are some of the new things? I think you, Did you say that you opened back up on Mondays? Is Tuesday. That, we opened back up on Tuesday. Okay, not Mondays yet. Uh, now we didn't close on Mondays because everyone else would close on Mondays. Yeah, Mondays See? is one of our busiest days. Exactly. <laughs> we were talking about this shit today. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, why, I had people ask me like, why did you close on Tuesday? I'm like, 
because, because every restaurant in Kenton is closed on Monday. <laughs> he is. He's reading our minds again. A guy that looks, a guy that looks at the damn numbers and adjusts to them. It's amazingly, you know, it's cra- we were talking about that today. It ain't like, rocket science. It's not freaking rocket science. Can you count to freaking seven? You should be able to figure this shit out. We were watching it today because we were like, "What are we gonna do for dinner, man?" I don't know. We got these two podcasts to record tonight. We're like, "What do we do? What do we do?" And it was like. Uh, laughing Hour Jays, and that's pretty much it for downtown food. And it was like, why is every place closed on Monday? And I told him, I said, I'm just going to open a spot up that's just called Mondays. And yeah. you just be <laughs> just open Monday. Mondays. I said, Angie was like, well, I'm going to meet you downtown after the interview tonight so you can go out to eat. I said, why? There's nothing open. There's nothing open. She's like, oh, yeah, just grab a six-pack and come home. I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, laughing Hour gets my lunch every Monday I love almost yeah, just because it's right there. And, we yeah, eat Jays a lot, too. They're open on Mondays. For lunch. Yeah, we like sushi, and they got good sushi. Yeah, they do. They really do. They really do. Thank Absolutely. goodness. I was, getting, I was getting sushi deprived in this town. That little, I don't want to talk bad, but there's a place in town that's not good. Yeah, I would agree. <laughs> I would agree. The I was with that, too, because I got really sushi spoiled in Columbus, and then we moved here, and it was like, meh. And I'm not really trying, like, to drive 40 minutes really isn't a big deal coming from where we come from. That was, like, standard, but, like, now we're all spoiled. I have lived here long enough to say... Oh, I got to go all the way out there by Walmart. Because I was told when I first moved here, I was like, everything is within seven minutes. It's great. And Jacques Pasolik <laughs> was like, yeah, I said that too. And then you'll know you've lived here long enough when you start saying all the way to Walmart. And I was like, <laughs> you're crazy, bro. It's eight minutes from anywhere. And he was like, I'm telling you. And then like one time I said it and I was like, son of a gun. He freaking called it. Now I say it all the time. But yeah, we were talking about the be open on Mondays today. So you were closed on Tuesdays only for a period, and now you're just back through summer. Because it's hot in the kitchen. Yeah, it makes sense. And really, really, we use Tuesday as a day to keep the equipment cleaned up and everything going. And in wintertime, it's a little bit more difficult to make payroll without that Tuesday. Right. And in the summertime, right. it's not all that big a deal. Yep. And it also gives me a chance to cool the restaurant down because it gets hot. Mm-hmm. And when you cut all the equipment off for a day and everything's off it and it's settles. resting. I mean, it gets, it's 100 degrees in that kitchen in the summertime. Yep. Yeah, the damn thing man. I can do about it. Yeah. It's yeah, hot. Just, you got to make the food. And when you're making so much because you're sending it all over the place, I mean, yeah. holy cow. Do you get, uh, this is just a personal question, do you guys get Oink Express, like, hey, I'm on the beach? Or I'm on the way to the beach, like, can I pick it up on, on yeah. my way through? Well, it's just a call-in or you just call in. That's just a normal call-in. Yeah, just call in takeout and say, I mean, you can call yeah, in takeout and say, I want the party pack, which gotcha. is on the Oink Express um, pamphlet, okay. and we'll fix it for you and put it in a box and give it to you. Sweet. Okay. You say you want it hot or you want it cold mm-hmm. or you want it frozen, and we just and we do it. Awesome. Very cool. Very cool. I got to get onto that, man. Start taking that stuff. I just got my – Rolling through. I got my shipment. We had these big, huge cooler boxes, about like this big, about the size of a 48-quart cooler. Really? That's what we use for the big orders. Mm-hmm. And I ordered – they just came in today, 250 of them. I had nowhere to put them. They're all stacked up outside the restaurant. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's a You got to figure out where to put the damn things tomorrow. <laughs> no doubt. How many uh, how many pigs do you guys go through a day now? Um, Some crazy. We crazy go figure. through. We're cooking about six pigs a day. Six, five, That's six, seven. Crazy. Yeah, yeah but about, we're doing about two. Happen. Well, see, a pig. If you got if you got like a you got a hundred pound pig, you're gonna get forty pounds of barbecue out of it. Yeah, you see okay. about forty percent. Okay. So yeah, we're doing like one hundred and fifty pound pigs. They're giving about. 70 pounds of barbecue, something like that. 60 pounds, 70 pounds of barbecue. And we, we're cooking about four or five. We're getting 250, 300 pounds a day. And then on weekends, we do more. Mm-hmm. Like Friday and Saturday, you know, we'll, we'll, cook, we'll chop four or five, 600 pounds of barbecue, depending on what's going on. <laughs> I got a catering job Saturday. I got two parties Saturday morning. I got one party Saturday morning at 7 o'clock for DuPont retirees, breakfast, 35 people. And I got another one at 9 a.m., for breakfast for 80 people. Then I got, then after they leave, we're going to break the rooms down. I got three parties for lunch. One, two, three. All three rooms are filled up. Nice. And I got three more parties at night. And I got a catering job in Kernersville for 350 people. Holy freaking cow. And that's supposed to be my day off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> enjoy your day off. Yeah, Seven I'm, Saturdays. I'm going to enjoy I mean? my, I'm going <laughs> to probably go in and work till about noon. Yeah. There I'll get, I'll get, that'll, that'll be, that'll take care of the breakfast parties, the lunch parties, the catering jobs. And everything but the two nighttime parties. That's and they incredible. should be able to and they should be able to handle it out. Yeah, they'll be all right. They'll be all right. That's incredible, man. That is incredible. That's a ton of stuff. Man. There's I got next next Wednesday I got it. like so I got three catering jobs for like hundred people at lunch and four at night. That's when the guy the day the guy called me up and said, I gotta have a catering job. I was like, He wanted seafood cooked on site. I'm like, man, there's nobody here to cook you seafood on site. Yeah, yeah. And I said, I'm not gonna deliver seafood because it's gonna suck. Yeah, I said I'll do barbecue and fried chicken because it'll be okay. But I'm not going to deliver seafood; it ain't gonna be no good. Mm-hmm. Only I'll do seafood is cook it on site. Yeah, 
Well, and you know, that's a cool thing too, man. It's like providing the quality and the satisfaction of like, Hey, I'm, let me just go ahead and protect you from this burn job. Cause we've learned it and we don't want to be, a, we don't want you to be subject to this thing that we've learned. So right. that's pretty, that's slick. The, the second best answer ever is no. Yeah. I mean, there's yes. Number one, there's no number two. And then there's all that other bullshit kicking rocks <laughs> yeah. and yeah, <laughs> <laughs> all that other stuff after there. But absolutely. Well, cool, man. What else you got going on? Anything fun? You guys got, uh, you got Bobby. What's, what are the happenings? Bob, the we business? got Bobby married every Wednesday night. Dick Knock is out hurt. He oh. passed out at a restaurant about three weeks ago. No doubt. Low blood sugar or something. Mm. Had to call the ambulance. Yeah. So his doctor said he can't play until February. So we got Bobby every Wednesday night. We're doing a buy one peck, get one peck free every Wednesday night at the Lulu's Oyster Bar. What is a peck for those that don't know, like people that it's might be from It's about 25 to 30 oysters, 25, 26, 27. Entire the oysters thing. have been pretty good size this year, so it's been yeah. about 26, 27 most of the time. They come from the North River. They're good. Really good. I to hit that up. That's you Wednesday. like oysters? Oh, yeah. Have you been yet? I haven't. I got to come down. I got to come down. I don't, it's not more than seven minutes away. I know. It's across. <laughs> it's all the way across, it's across the, the bridge. It's across the river and 70. It's so far for me. I told you I'm all adjusted to this tiny, uh, tiny town with lifestyle, but. What are we doing Wednesday night? Oh, we're going to Kevin's Wednesday. Maybe we'll stop out there too. Oh, so you never what? never tried oysters? No, you first of all you got to get them. You got to get them steamed at least a little bit if you've never done it. Okay, and I probably if you haven't done it before, you need to get a medium to medium well, and you put it on a rich. You put it on a saltine cracker, and you put a cocktail sauce on it with some extra horseradish. Add it on and eat it. The only thing you'll taste is the cracker and the, and, the, and the cocktail sauce and a little chewy gummy thing in the middle. Delicious. It tastes like horseradish and cocktail sauce if you put enough of them up there. <laughs> <laughs> I eat them raw, right I out of the shell. I eat them raw all the time, yeah. Love we used raw. to go duck hunting with my dad when I was a kid, and we got done duck hunting down on the Pungo River. We'd go oystering and go get ourselves a peck of oyster, carry back to the house and eat, and we'd eat them right there in the boat. Yeah. Just take them right out of the water, rinse them off, pop one open, slurp yeah. it down. I got to figure out like the proper shucking technique because I'm not like a I'm not a master shucker, you would say <laughs> by any means. But, I've been uh, shucking orchards since I was eight. My dad's from yeah. the Chesapeake Bay. You just got to get them. Is I when they're colder, they're easier to shuck, right? Do they open no, up? They're, no, they're, not, they're, never, they're never easy. They're to never shuck. easy to shuck. No, we easy, got a whole easy, bunch. I was like, easiest this is a pain way to, in the easiest ass. way to the shuck them stone. is to steam them. Then yeah, they open, they open up. right up. Yeah. yeah, when they open, they're ready. And if you to eat. eat them raw, you got to get it in. You got to hold it in. You got to get a glove in your hand. Yeah. And you got to hold it real good so it don't slip. It'll cut the hell out yeah, of your fingers. Cut your freaking hand open. So you got to get it right there in the little back where the little hinge is at. Mm -hmm. You got to shove that knife in there as hard as oh. you can until it goes in the hinge. It will go yeah. in the hinge. There's a muscle in there. Okay. And you'll feel it penetrate it. Mm -hmm. When it penetrates it, turn the knife and it pops it open. A lot of people try to go in through the front. Yeah, that's that's not to do that. No, no. No, you'll cut yourself. Exactly. You got to go in through the back. There you go. You want to be a good shucker, you got to use the back door. That's right. Straight up. Straight up. It's technical. <laughs> it's technical term. It's allowed. That makes a lot of sense because, yeah, we were we got a bunch of my dad and my uncle were down a couple – the weekend that Tennessee beat Alabama. That's how I remember what weekend it was. And um, we got a – I think we got some oysters from Reynolds or whatever and some other things. And we were messing around with the Blackstone. And we were trying to shuck them and we couldn't figure it out. We were like, fuck it. So we threw them on the plastic. <laughs> you were trying us, to go in the front way. Yeah, we were you? like, how the hell do you do this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you we couldn't go in figure the back it out. Way. <laughs> so my, my uncle is such a, a ham bone. He's like, Mr. He's just hilarious. So he had purchased. I mean, I can't believe you of all people didn't YouTube it. I know. I'm an idiot. What in the hell? I don't know. I'm a freaking moron. <laughs> I should have just YouTube freaking looked a damn it up. I know. I'm a jackass. <sighs> I was too excited. But yeah, the uh, we just, <laughs> well, the lady down that rounds was like, we're like, how do you make these? And she was like, you just throw them on the grill, and when they pop open, you can do that. You too. can eat them. I, mean, and I was I, like, so that worked out. We, great. I used to do that. Just want to have Super Bowl parties at the house. We'll get yeah. a, like a bushel of oysters, and I'll yeah. fire up the charcoal grill. Just, let them sit on there. just throw them on the grill. Yeah. Don't even put nothing else there on them. Just yeah. throw them out there yeah. on the charcoal, and it'll open up. Yeah, when they open up, pull they them open off, up, throw grab a one of them off, pop it open, and eat it. Exactly. That's kind of what we did. We did it on the Blackstone, which is pretty cool. Yeah. I love the Blackstone. I'm not like a super huge cooking guy, but like, what is that? It's like a, it's just like a flat top griddle. Yeah, a griddle. Yeah, yeah. super easy. They'll, they'll open up on that too. Yep, it was per We just kept hitting them with the water, <laughs> and then like three would four would open. It was pretty awesome. But yeah, interesting. Yeah, I never know. I never knew what the official peck was. Is it weight related, or is it um, count? You said like twenty. Yeah, I mean it, it, it is weight related. Okay, but it's like this is how people around here 
measure a peck of oysters, okay? Yes. Is they get a five gallon bucket and they fill it full of oysters. Okay. And that's a peck. I mean, that's a, that's a bushel. That's what I needed. I needed the that's layman's a term. Okay. That's a technical bushel. Okay. And okay. there's supposed to be four pecks to a bushel. Okay. Okay. So you count out how many oysters are in there, and that's how many. I mean, if you get a bushel that has 120 oysters, then the peck is going to be 30 each. Yep. Because the weight, size. And if you get a damn, if you get a bushel and the and the peck is in the bushel only has 100 and it's 25. Mm-hmm. And I get what you call, I get more. I get a, what you call a hundred pound bag. Okay. Which is more than a bushel. Yeah. And it's, it's actually got anywhere between eight and ten pecks in it. Okay. Gotcha. That's technical. That's how it's supposed to be done. That's what I, like. I mean, everybody, A lot of people say it ain't, but that's the way it is. Cool. Hey, I'm learning shit. You never know what you might learn in the Kicking It With podcast, man, because <laughs> I'm asking questions for myself selfishly. So I really didn't know because I've always seen the buy a peck, get a peck, and I'm like, is that like for me and my wife or is that like for me and like six friends? I can't even eat a peck. I don't think I could eat a peck either. I can't. Even I know eat you couldn't eat a peck. You can do buy a half a peck, get a half peck free. So basically, okay. you get a peck for half price. Oh, that's right in there. Then that's that's you for know, a, a couple. Hey, two people can go do that. Yeah, I let them up. You know, half peck is like twenty two, twenty three dollars, something like that. Yeah, sweet. So there you go. Who eats thirty oysters at one time for Jerry? Well, people do it. People do, but yeah. they don't eat the people. The professional oyster eaters, they just do. They just do oysters and butter. They don't put no crackers on it, no cocktail sauce on it. They can eat more that way. <laughs> Doesn't fill them up as quick. They want to get the money's worth. They're like professional buffet eaters, you know. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. I'm like, uh, I like a trace of cocktail sauce on there, but pretty much just the, like, I can just go with like a little lemon squeeze and I'm ready to rock. I don't even need the butter. I eat them with lemon. Lemon. I eat them raw. I eat them. I like them with cocktail sauce and and jalapenos and. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Is that like the rooster one? I, they, I eat them. That's how I eat mine. Yeah. Is what a a rooster. It, what is that? Is that the one with it's the, a, the pork That's skin a raw on it? oyster on a saltine with the cocktail sauce, horseradish, and a jalapeno. That's a rooster. I don't know, Jerry. It sounds pretty gross. It sounds pretty gross. <laughs> you eat three of them at the Sandpiper in 15 minutes and give you a free t shirt. They have about 10 t shirts they owe me. <laughs> Before I opened up Lulu's. Is that, the ha- is that the jalapeno or for the horseradish? I, look, I mean, is why do they give you the? Hot. Yeah, I, yeah. I like I like that stuff. Yeah, jalapeno doesn't like. They're not I'm flaming hot. It's not like a habanero, habanero. or nothing. Yeah, good or a ghost God. pepper. Yeah, don't touch your freaking eyeballs no, for like I know. three days. I, yeah, let alone take a whiz. We make a hot sauce at a restaurant called Rooster Sauce, and we put habanero peppers in it. And the first time I made it, <laughs> I was just back there in the back, running the peppers through the grinding machine and everything, and the uh-huh. whole room got the fumes in it, and I'm like, oh damn, rub my eyes. That was mm-hmm. it. I had to go back in the room for like an hour. Yeah. <laughs> and you'd better not run to the restroom either because that's a whole other pleasure you probably aren't really yeah. hip to. Unless you are. You and you just wash your hands. That stuff just doesn't come off. It doesn't, man. It just like stays orange. Yeah. Yes. We grew some a little bit when I was like 12 or 13. I was like, I don't know about that. I'm not trying to touch those because I'd be stupid like that too. I'd be like this. We were watching this cool video the other day. This guy was showing all his features of this camera we bought. And he uh, was part of the video was he had to like. He was working in his sponsorships and his promotions into the video while showing what the camera could do. And he ate like a ghost pepper chip. And he was like, ah, it's in my eye. Somehow I must have touched my eye. And they went back and found in the footage where he had like brushed his, like a fly landed on his forearm and he went like this. And then and he had the stuff on him and he didn't think about it. And then like later on he was trying to rub his eye or rub the sweat off of him but not touch it with his hands. And he went like this and they like actually showed it where he did. And he transferred it to swat a fly <laughs> and then he put it right to his freaking eyeball. It was pretty funny stuff. But mm. yeah, I don't, I don't mess around with that kind of heat. But I like a good, uh, good jalapeno yeah, on pretty like much those. anything. Pretty much anything. Like, uh, oh, you like the J's for the sushi. Speaking of jalapenos, B-52 roll. I've had it. I like that. It's got the smoked... Kind of that smoky. I like the, the one jalapeno. with the little prime rib on top of it. Which one is that? Is that the Mother Earth? It used to be. No, no, no. I'm not no. sure which one it is over here. It used to be the Wasabi 88 roll at Wasabi 88. <laughs> <laughs> I was over there by that place last week, actually. We ended up going to Basil's, but. Was it in Raleigh or, or the one in Greenville? Greenville. Greenville. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we ventured out that way. We actually went to go to Maine and Moon, but we walked in nine top. So. 7.30, nine top. Half the dining room tables were unset. Not even dirty, they were just unset. They told us, eh, maybe get you, get you sat about an hour and a half from now. About what time? About an hour and a half. 
And or you can see empty tables. I said we can just push those two tables together. Nine chairs are right there. You got to understand, it's not always like that. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Okay, we were just like we just want to get drinks for like an hour. We do the same thing at a restaurant. Later, we're chilling. We had our full staff on Sunday at lunchtime. It's fourteen servers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, there's been times in the past two three years we've only had six. Yeah. Okay. So we just take. We just there's sections that we just mark out. Yeah, just and the servers come and say, "Well, why can't I sit?" The customers come and say, "Well, I can't sit there." So, well, you can sit there, but there's nobody going to wait on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. there's no waitress assigned to that section. You can sit there all you want to, mm-hmm. but you just you're going to be sit there. Yeah, there's just not the staff for it. I mean, I suggest you go to the buffet. Yeah, right, right, right. Exactly. <laughs> but if you want to get waited on, I got three waitresses on this side and two on the other, and me and Barbara are waiting tables on this side. Yeah. You sit, if we sit you in that chair, you're going to get waited on. If you walk in and sit down in the empty table, you actually just going to sit there and look stupid for about yeah. an hour, okay? <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Yeah, we were just like, we're like, it's cool. We just want to like, can we just like sit at a table, not here, and just order drinks in the bar. And then when you get around to us, you get around to us. And they're like, hmm. we're like, all right, cool, that's fine. Like, where else would you recommend that we go? That mother was like, why don't you go up to Ruby Tuesday? I was like, oh, you mean a place completely different from here? Like, Cool man, like <laughs> we were like Ruby what? Tuesdays. You mean your only suggestion? I came here because you have a nice menu of random things, not chain like. And your suggestion to me was like, "Why don't you run up and hit up Ruby Tuesdays?" I was like, "Man, come on, dude! Like, I know you're. I know you got like three spots that are really good in your back of your mind. And you just didn't share them with us. We were like, it's cool, but yeah, we were like, man, bummer. Because we were really trying to go up there and just have a real. You good just want to go drink? Yeah, pretty much just wanted to hang out and drink. And yeah, the food was whenever, whenever the food gets here, the food gets there, but. Can I buy expensive drinks and just sit over here? Is that cool? No. No. <laughs> yeah, he was like, you can, but you can sit at the front door. And I was like, okay. It is. It is what it is, man. It's a tough It's a tough game for sure, but oh, well. Well, well man. it ain't as fun as it used to be, I can tell you that. Yeah. Yeah. I know that's right, man. I really enjoyed it. I was I was in the game for a while, like bartending and stuff at Convention Center Hotel and, and things like that. I really, really enjoyed it. You meet a ton of people, and you get to – you you learn real quick – or you learn that you you either learn that you don't want to talk to a lot of people, or you learn how to talk to a bunch of yeah, people. That really was quickly. my thing. I learned how to. When I first started working at Kings, I was shy. Yeah, if yeah. You can, if you can believe that, shocking. <laughs> Amazing <laughs> but I was how shy. It you, yeah. And when I first when I bought Kings, I worked at Kings for fifteen years before I bought it. Mm-hmm. I was work, I worked at takeout stores in town, mm-hmm. gotcha. and then when I bought the restaurant in two thousand four, I was still shy because I didn't have to work with the with. The, I mean, I did the public people to walk in, but I can't. You know, no big deal. I didn't have to be. I didn't have to be on TV. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you didn't have to be the face of it. You're yeah, and then, yeah. and I was still shy after that, and then this person ran into the restaurant with a car one morning, about <laughs> three or four years, about four or five years after I bought it, yeah. and he ran into it, and I was like, man, he, just, I mean, he went right into takeout. <laughs> he had one of them metal things, went right through the windshield, right beside <laughs> where he was sitting at. If it had been like a foot over, it would have killed him. No okay? Doubt. Wow. So I'm like, what in the hell happened? The guy's like, man... I pulled up to the daggone Piggly Wiggly, and I was choking on a Bojangles biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> and he hit the I was like, so the reporter came and asked me about it. I was like, man, he was, the guy was choking on a biscuit. Yeah. And it was like, my, all my friends were like, that was like <laughs> the greatest interview I've ever seen anybody ever do. And I said, ever since then, I've had no problem with it. That's awesome. We'll have to check it out. We'll just try and find that clip and throw it in here. <laughs> that is too funny. That is it was odd. Uh, Channel 12. Channel it had 12, to have been... Yeah. 2008, 2009, okay. something like that. We'll have to check it out. Let's see if it's on the webs, the interwebs. I w- I w- we had when the, when the Wood Ducks were coming in and were trying to get their name and everything mm-hmm. together, um, we wanted it to be named Hogzilla. Yes. Okay? Yes. <laughs> and so we're like, we're talking, we had a meeting, and Wade and everybody's in the meeting, and uh, we're like, yes. Is right now it's neck and neck. So I said, "Damn it, I got I, so I invented a sandwich called the Hogzilla mm-hmm. and put it on the menu and started yeah. promoting it. Yes. And I had Channel Twelve come and interview yes. me about it for the Wood Ducks, you know. And like, yes, in the in in the damn in the um, <laughs> Hogzilla won. Yes. And but it, it was copyright; they couldn't use the name. Oh no way! Yeah, so that's why we ended up being Wood Ducks. Well, uh, still a yeah. good name. So but... I bought a food truck and named the Hogzilla. <laughs> then I sold it. <laughs> Even better. That's too freaking. I sold funny. it for more than I paid for it. <laughs> yeah, that's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. Well, yeah, man, we gotta get you get that. Uh, we were talking the other day. I was talking with someone about uh, finding a business in town to have the NFL Sunday ticket. So I think I think I nominate you. I think you you'd be the spot, man. You get to benefit from it. 
I'll see what I can do. Check it out. <laughs> Not this year, but yeah, next year. Maybe next year. Yeah. Well, see, the thing is, we're full. The rest, the restaurant's full on Sunday lunch at one o'clock. Yeah. Okay. But by one thirty, it's about it, that whole side where the TVs are at. The worship bar side is empty. And it stays empty for the rest of the day. Really? Why? Wow. The church crowd comes church in. Church crowd comes in, and leaves, and then, and then and then we do the buffet on the other side, and we keep. I mean, sometimes we get tables over there. Yeah. But there's always be room for like 15, 20 people to sit there and watch yeah. ball games. And I got two TVs, and it would be no problem to add a third. You guys got wings going over there? Chicken wings? I can do them. Chicken wing Sunday with the Sunday ticket, all NFL season at Kings, man. You'd have my business for sure. I would be there for that. We could do that. I got it. We're gonna hit up the oyster wings night. and oysters. We could even open an oyster bar up. Shit. Yeah. Jerry, he's gonna see if he can eat one first, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, Jerry's if you gonna can't be like, eat the if you oyster. You can eat the wings. Yeah. Okay. Do them like smoked or fried. I can do whatever you want. It's... I got. I got wings. We have wings. You're just not on the regular menu. They're on my banquet menu. Okay. We have like a regular fried wing. Yeah. Yeah. And then we have, like, a, a Thai chili wing. Yeah. I'm just throwing it out. You're an no ambitious good. entrepreneur that adjusts to the, the data, and I'm just saying, there's I don't. There's not any place in town that has a Sunday ticket. There's no place with there's the all... ticket and chicken wings in this whole town. And I think that with the amount of people here that are, care about sports and great food, I don't understand why. that I've talked about it, like, down here, like, just opening a place called, we joke about it, I say wings and waffles. There is a wings and, like, some brunchish food. Brunchy with, food. Yeah, with the ticket. It would smack, and it could just be open Sundays okay. and Mondays since Park everything else is Park and Dills do that. They could, but they don't do the TV stuff too much. They don't, they really, don't have TVs in there? They do. I haven't but, been in there. Yeah, they, they have TVs and stuff, but they don't. Uh, I don't know if they do, like, the live uh, live television in there. Oh, okay. Usually they have, like, Wicked Tune on or some other I got Apple TV hooked up, my TV at the restaurant and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think that, I don't know what they have, the Roku's. But, I mean, the only place in my... I'm just learning about the Roku. Yeah. And I'm learning that I need to have it in every house and get rid of cable. Yes. 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 Definitely. Roku, well, I didn't man. Know I'm going to go on vacation. Ago. Every vacation place I go to, they, it's Roku TV, and I just go in there and key in everything that I already have on my phone from Amazon, and it makes everything work. <laughs> it's pretty sweet. It's pretty and sweet. It doesn't cost anything. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead and ax that 100 bucks a TV or whatever it is for the cable. Cable's crazy. We cut the cable cord, man, a while back, and it was yeah, just I've amazing. Yeah, I've got it. I got direct TV, and it's getting ready to go bye-bye. Yeah. Well, you're going to need it for the ticket, but. Well, I can have it in the <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> well, I mean, if you have Roku, can't you get just – I mean, they have sports up there, too. Can you do that? I don't – yeah. Yeah, they got sports. It's yeah, like, yeah, it's I've like got live TV or something or other or something yeah, or other. I've got a Hulu Live, so I do my live TV and but they all have, that. But they have – like I, I know or 80 a month. over at Mary um, Whaley's house, we were over watching the ball game, and she pulled it up on her Roku, and it had like six games to pick from. Yes. I said, we want to watch that one. Yeah, <laughs> And exactly. that's what we watched. Exactly. But, yeah, there's no place for that. Like, because I can't go – where do I go to watch the Browns game? Or like – Cleveland. Inter inter exactly. <laughs> Just in Cleveland because no one else wants to show that shit. I'm with that. I'm with that. It's terrible. It's uh, it's also terrible to watch the Bengals be so successful now, because we hate them. What's up with the Bengals this year? I don't know. They just beat KC last night. Did they really? I didn't see that game. Joe Burrow three and zero against uh, KC. I think I, he's I the like, only I like player. Mr. To... I like Mr. Mahomes. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a fan. I'm not sure if it's two times or three times, but uh, they didn't Burrow's... beat him last year in the world in the Super Bowl. I think they were saying something about them. The Chiefs the, won the Super Bowl last year, right? No, the beat. Bengals were in the Super Bowl last year. Did, but didn't they play Kansas they City? They're both in the AFC. Huh? So they had, I think the well, Bengals right. beat play, them. They can't play The that. Bengals beat them in KC to go to the Super Bowl. That's right. That's what happened. That's yeah, right. And then they got, they got beat up pretty badly in the Super who, Bowl. Who play, I can't remember. Who, who beat them in the Super Bowl? Oh. No, they did. Tampa Bay, Just last they year? lost last year in the first round. 2021? 2022. 2022. All the Rams, Rams beat the Bengals. Yeah. They had Stratford, the quarterback. Yeah. He, he, they traded for him. He got hot. Yeah, immediate, immediate success with that. That was great. They had some cool, funny commercials about that, too, this offseason. I don't know if you saw them. I don't think L.A. is doing all that great this year, though. I don't think so, either. Yeah. Well, it's Super Bowl hangover, man. They always yeah. get it. Usually, the losing Kinda team. Kind of looks like Tar Heels, the national championship hangover. <laughs> I wasn't going to say it, but they look like shit. Go Bucks! That's just for you, Howie. I know you're going to hate that. Uh, not that they're no, any. We, we play Ohio not State that basketball this year. I don't think we? so at Madison Square Garden. Yeah. Is it the NIT pre-season -ter pre tournament? <sighs> I looked it up because I was looking it up. I know we play the Ohio guy, State. 
the guy that I've got split uh, that yeah, we like split getting, our box with. All them damn youngers are kids nowadays. They just you can't tell them nothing. Well, that's the thing with the Tar Heels, though. Don't they have four or five starters from last year's team? Yeah, back? four. But they sucked in the regular season last year too. Not this bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Four. They're out of sync. Sucks. I think I saw something the other day that, that uh, the football and basketball team has lost six games in a row. Combined. I'm not, the, 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 since last week, the, since the weekend before last, Two the only positive, the only positive sign in my life has been the Redskins tied the Giants this past weekend on Sunday. That's it. <laughs> Everything else has been a loss, loss. I mean, I, I watched one yeah. soccer game every That's eight lost. years. Yeah. And we got our ass handed to us on worldwide television, not national television. I'm talking about worldwide. The whole damn world. We were talking about that too. How can a country so large be suck at so soccer. sucky at one sport? And they're like, <laughs> and well, because all like, the good you athletes. You play Denmark. I mean, the Netherlands. I mean, what they got like a population of a hundred. Yeah. But hell, they they invented the game, so that's kind of part of the problem. But Los Angeles is like three times the size of that country. <laughs> <laughs> I got caught for uh, my I get, my mom found like the can of dip in the in the Letterman jacket and flipped out on me. I was like, it's not mine. It's Ronnie's. Ronnie's always dipping. You know him. He's a piece of shit. I'm just holding it for him because his mom's hot on his case. That was the first time I got out of it. I didn't really dip anyway, so that was easy to quit. Easy then, to quit with something yeah, you didn't do. I was like, fuck that. I got in trouble and I didn't even, I I didn't even get it in once. And I, I did was one like, or two no. times and it gave me a dip. I mean, it Horrible. made me dizzy yeah, it's and a wild. headache. I'm like, how do you get through the first two or three times you who do this? I feel this? like I'm going to die. Yeah, who did this and was like, give me some more. Yeah, who, yeah, I think exactly. I'm going to do that every day for the rest well, of my, my life. My question has always been, who ate the first oyster? I, who killed the first chicken and was who looked at a chicken and was like I'm gonna eat that son of a bitch. That's a sick, starving son of a gun. Who broke the egg? Yeah. What are we supposed to do with these things? Yeah, crack them open. Devil that looks delicious. What? They were starving, man. But hey. Yeah. You never know. <laughs> the other time I got uh, caught with substances in the house, I was like 16 or 17, and my mom had like finished this room in the basement for me, and uh, there's like. The faux wall, like we had to put a little closet because the water meter was there. So it didn't really do it, serve any purpose, but you could reach around behind it and shove stuff behind the wall. So I was entrepreneurial at a young age, always. I didn't necessarily drink at all, but all my friends did. And I happened to have this buddy whose brother was old enough to buy booze. Well, so I need gas some. money. So I'd be like, hey, get me that jumbo bottle of rum in the plastic container. And I'd break it down into little 16 ounce contain like water bottles and fill them up, and then I'd sell them to all my friends. Fantastic. Entrepreneur. <laughs> yeah, I was an entrepreneur I'm trying to make money. Well, my mom found it one night and she called, and I like remember taking the phone call. And uh, she's like, I need you to come home. I was like, okay. I come home, and you're like pit in the stomach. Like, you know, you're like, something's happening. Like, I don't even know what I'm getting in trouble for because there's so many things that it could be, you know, like. I don't even know what she, the cops Which one get it, it is. Yeah, what is it? <laughs> and so I got all the way home, and she starts telling me, and she's crying. She's like, I found this, you know, if you need to talk about it, or, you know, it's a problem, we can do stuff, and da 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 She's crying. You should have said, look, Mom. I'm still going, what is it? Like, <laughs> And she goes, I found this alcohol. I said, it's all good. I started smiling. I looked at her and laughed. She's like, why are you smiling? I said, I'm not even drinking it, Mom. I just buy it and then sell it to all my friends to make money on it. And she really starts crying. And she looks at me and she goes, she goes, I don't know what's worse. My son drinking at 17 or selling booze to all of his friends. And I was like, but selling I'm not booze drinking to all your it. friends. Go buy me some half gallons, yeah. mom. Get on I was board. like, mom, if you can get in on this, I don't even have to pay Chris. <laughs> so funny. This is the dumbest shit ever, man. So dumb. But anyway, oh, good times. Good times. Yes. <laughs> well, man, I appreciate you coming on and no teaching problem. us about uh, oysters for sure. Uh, it's def- I'm going to get Jerry out there. If we can't make it this Wednesday, the following Let Wednesday. me know when you're coming. All right. Because sometimes I'll leave early. I might All hang right. around if you're coming. All right. We'll let you know. We'll let you know for sure. That sounds like a good time, but uh, this was definitely a good time. I appreciate you coming out. No problem. This is fun as hell. I had a great time. We'll have to have you back. But uh, anything else you want to add? We're good. Ready I'm to rock? Good. Ready to go. All right, y'all. That My wife's was at the house waiting on me right now. Episode 16, kicking it with Zach Holcomb, special and guest Joe Hargett. Joe Hargett. Have a good one.